Welcome back to an, our seminar on prayer. In the first session, we talked about the importance of prayer. That was our introduction. Now I want to uh, respond to certain questions that I've heard uh, over the course of my ministry, especially people that have uh, no church background. They come into a church, they see people praying in different ways. Sometimes it brings a little confusion. Sometimes you just wonder, well, how can I, uh, I don't know how to pray. Uh, uh, would you pray for me? I, I can't pray. So I just want to ask, answer these questions. Well, how do we do it? Uh, when do we do it? Uh, where to pray? Things like that. There are very different uh, positions that we see in the scriptures. Positions of prayer. Some, some people, uh, th that old um, <laughs> holding of your hands together like this, I don't know where that came from. I have yet to find that really in the scriptures, but that seems to be one of the, the noted um, positions when people come like that. <laughs> uh, they, they know, okay, he's praying. It's a position of prayer. There's really nothing that spiritual about it, but uh, it is a position that is seen often in the church. There's also this position of, holding our, ha our hands open. It's like we're receiving from God. We're opening our hands. Even other religions use this type of position in praying. So what is in the Bible? What, what is the positions we see in the Bible? I believe any kind of position is okay. It's not something that you don't, that uh, one is better than the other, but just to get a more of a biblical perspective, Let's look at it. In 1 Timothy 2, 8, it says this, I desire that when in, that in every place that men should pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or quarreling. In other words, the lifting up of our hands while we pray. Can it be like this? Can it be like this? <laughs> Depends many times on our church traditions. As I've traveled and ministered around the world and in different places, I've seen that there are different traditions. There are those that were just one hand. Others, they don't raise their hands at all. Others, both hands. Others, that's like, it, it really doesn't matter. It does become a tradition, though. And many people copy each other, thinking this way is our way or the most correct way. It's just to note that in the scriptures, there are different examples of how to pray. There can be kneeling as well. That's probably one of the most noted positions. The great uh, missionary to India, John, um, uh, John, oh, John Knox up in uh, Scotland, and other uh, missionaries around the world, they were noted for their prayer on their knees to the point that the, the wooden floor where they kneeled had grooves in them because of their kneeling so many hours in prayer. Acts 20, 36 these says, When he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. So Paul knelt when he prayed. Probably not all the time. But he, at least the Bible uh, notes that when he prayed, he knelt. In 1 Chronicles 23, 30, it says, And they were to stand every morning, thanking and praising God, and likewise in the evening, to stand and pray. Many times in church we'll, we'll hear that. Would you let us all now stand and pray? <laughs> uh, standing is a position of respect. So it is one, one way that we can pray, is by standing. In Ezra 10.1, and in many other scriptures, but I just want to point out a few of these to just kind of give us a biblical perspective. It says, while Ezra prayed and made confession, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God. And so the, the emotion of weeping and of casting ourselves, prostrating ourselves down. This is a position I've seen uh, many times in prayer. 
where people just, they want to get as far down as possible. They want to, they want to prostrate themselves as a sign of humility and surrender to the Lord. And then in Acts 4, 24, it says, when they heard it, they lifted up their voices together to God. And tell, speaking together, lifting, everyone praying at the same time. Make, it sounds like a, a lot of noise. Uh, in in, a, in a Revelations, it says that the, uh, all these thousands and millions of people together, they were all praising God and they were praying and, and it says a sound like of many waters. It was like a, it was like a, 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 <laughs> a train going through, you know, just so much uh, uh, noise as people lifted up their voices. But you know, when we do that, God hears every single one of them. But it is something that in the church we may see where everyone prays at the same time. Everyone lifts up their voices. Other times just one person leads and the others say amen. We can pray silently in our hearts. In 1 Samuel 1.13, Hannah was speaking in her heart. It says, only her lips were moving and her voice was not heard. Some people prefer to be quiet while they pray. Prefer this. They don't like the noise. They don't like the, everybody praying and it kind of bothers them. It just distracts them. Well, instead of criticizing, let's just learn that there's many different ways to pray. It's like in Ephesians 6.18, it says, Praying at all times in the Spirit with all kinds of prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. There's many different ways that we can pray. So instead of judging, let's just learn that everything, when we do it before God, is accepted by Him. We can pray or walk. We can you know, uh, as, in, as it says in Joshua, wherever our foot treads, you know, we can walk it out, we can pray. And I've done that many times around in different nations as I've gone on prayer journeys, walking and proclaiming what God's purpose is for that nation. I have done it here in Portugal. We've uh, sent teams and we, we covered from north to south, east to west uh, in one day, we had hundreds of people walking different kilometers to cover this nation in prayer. You see, prayer is a priority for the church. It should be our priority in our individual lives, but in the activity of the church, it definitely is a priority. And so when should we pray? First Timothy 2.1, we've noted the scripture and I and I believe that in this seminar we'll probably recite this scripture over and over again. It says, first of all, you know, before you do anything else, and then all the different kinds of prayer. Pray for all people. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, it says, pray without ceasing. And so always pray. It's not just when we come to church, it's not just in our certain time we've scheduled in our life for prayer. Pray at all times. Talk to the Lord all the time. Luke 6, 12, it says, In these days he went out to the mountain to pray, and he prayed all night. He continued all night in prayer. Have you ever done that? Have you ever, on a one of those night watches, <laughs> Because the Lord talks a lot about these watches of the night, those uh, sentinels that are to watch, stand in the gap, pray for the nation, pray for the family. Psalms 119, 148 says, My eyes are awake before the watches of the night, that I might meditate on your promise. In other words, you're up in the middle of the night. And you're praying. Many times I've, I've uh, listened to my wife praying in the middle of the night. So I wake up and I hear her praying. If you can't sleep, then pray. We don't get bothered by that. Because this is a great way to spend our night. 
before you eat. That seems to be a customary thing. It shouldn't be just a religious practice that we do with a rote uh, prayer that uh, we've learned as a child. But it should be a thanksgiving for what we have received. Recognizing that the Lord is the source. 1 Timothy 4, 5 says, Nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is made holy by the word of God and prayer. So pray before you eat. Teach your children to do that, not just to dive in and everyone for himself. Stop. Before you do it, you eat, pray. Where should we pray? Just here in the in the building and what we call the temple? Is that the only place where we pray? It shouldn't be. The Bible talks about praying at home. Matthew 6, 5 and 6, Jesus says, when you pray, go into your room, go into your bedroom, shut the door, go into that special place that you've set aside. I have a special place in my house where I love to pray. It's just like when I go there and I sit in that one chair, it's just like I, all of a sudden, I just kind of like get into the flow of the Spirit in prayer. It's become a very special place for me. But it's not the only place. You can pray on your bed. Psalm 63, 6 says, When I remember you on my bed in the watches of the night, as I mentioned, my wife does this. <laughs> in the watches of the night, many times she's awake and she's praying. Paul and Silas prayed when they were in prison. Prison to many of us is not a desirable place to be. And you may have different undesirable experiences in your life and you find yourself in places that you don't want to be, well, that also is a place where you can pray. There are no barriers to prayer because prayer is to God. When you come together, the church, that's a good place to pray. We should pray when we're together. Not just sing, not just preach, but we should pray. In the temple. <laughs> the temple is that place that's dedicated just for that, to serve the Lord. Place that we do God's business. It should be a house of prayer. As Jesus called out and he recited Isaiah when Isaiah said, this is my house, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Don't wait till you have a prayer partner. I remember when my wife went out to, went to boarding school, her older sister says, look for someone that you can pray for, pray with. Get a prayer partner. And that is so important because as we'll learn in this seminar, it's where that, those two or three come together in prayer and in agreement. God really recognizes that, but there is many times where we don't have that. And she, for several years, didn't have a prayer partner. And she learned how to pray alone. Isolate yourself in that secret place. That's what in, in Jesus was explaining uh, to separate yourself, shut the door. Don't pray just to be seen by people. Don't pray to show your spirituality. Pray because you are connected with the Father. You are receiving from Him. You're working with Him in bringing forth His eternal purposes on the earth. Prayer can be done at any time, in any place. In crying, in lifting up our voices, or just a whisper, or just in our head. But when we incline ourselves to the Lord, when we seek Him with all of our heart, 
as Second Chronicles 7.14, if we will humble ourselves and pray, seek his face, turn from the busyness of our life, turn away from all those things that distract us, seek his face, he will meet us and he'll heal our land. God is desiring those that will stand in the gap, that will be the intercessors, the prayer warriors, those that will be noted for their prayer life, that carry with them the sweet presence of being with Jesus. So I want to encourage you, don't make any more excuses. I don't have time. I don't have a place. My situation is thus. No, we all have time. We all have the same hours in the day. Let's just create a habit of coming to God always. Order our day by putting him first. First pray. And you'll see the difference. Lord bless you.